Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing well. It's starting to get really hot here. So when it gets really hot and you walk around New York, a lot of liquid from air conditioning units falls on you. Kind of sucks. We haven't done a technical video in a while. So this video is going to be a little bit techie, but hopefully it should be good. And we're going to talk about how computer logic works. So before we get into it, this stuff is gonna sound super, super, super basic and very, oh yeah, that's a no brainer, but we'll see that all the basic things we'll cover here is what's the foundation for all the advanced things in all of computers. So let's do it. So I know a lot of people watching are more into software than they are hardware. And this video is gonna kind of err on the side of more hardware. Um, in software, I know you guys are used to writing a lot of conditional statements, loops. If this happens, this thing happens, else that happens, then this other thing happens. And those are also very logical statements, but the logic we're gonna cover in this video is not software logic. So the logic in this video is a little more low level and we're gonna get into how logic really works inside the computer and hardware. We're gonna do three things in this video. We're gonna introduce basic logical gates. What that means, we're gonna go over binary really quickly and then we're gonna add something. Three things and we're gonna do it all in this video. If those three things didn't make any sense to you, hopefully it will by the end of this video and we're gonna really go into some guts behind how our computer works, all right? Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a really brief introduction to what is a logical gate. And this is the core logic components inside a computer. And we're going to talk about AND first. AND, like A-N-D, AND. So analogy is always good. First, let's just take a quick example, real life example of when you might use a logical AND. Um, this is a boy and he's tall. So that's a sentence. This is a boy and he's tall. Pretty basic sentence, right? If both of these things apply to you, boy and tall, then the answer to the sentence or question is yes. So this is kind of the basic essence of the word and, and let's just keep breaking it down further. In computer land, we draw and like this. This is a logical gate for and. Two inputs on the left side, one output on the right side. Let's just tie this and gate back to our example of a boy and tallness. So two inputs, right? Gender and height. And the output is gonna be yes or no. So I'm gonna put up a table here. Don't look at the table right yet. We're gonna discuss it in one second, but this table represents every single possible outcome of this question. Input A is gonna be your gender, if you're a boy or you're not a boy. I know that's not typically correct, but for this video, A is gonna be gender, okay? B is gonna be your height, or more specifically, if you're tall or you're not tall. First scenario, you are not a boy, zero, and you're not tall. So obviously the answer is gonna be zero. You're not a boy and you're not tall. Second scenario is you're not a boy, but you're actually tall. Still not quite good enough, so the answer is still no, zero. Third outcome is you are a boy, but you're short. It doesn't cut it and the answer is still no. Finally, we're at the last scenario when you are a boy and you are tall. And finally, if you're both these things, you are a boy and A-N-D, you're tall, then the answer to this question is gonna be yes or one. So as you can see, this stuff isn't really rocket science. It's pretty straightforward, but once we start mixing and matching different logical ideas together, it can get pretty complicated, but just take another look at this table for and, boy and tall, and just let it sink in real quick. So, so every time you see that wire in these diagrams, every time a wire is going into somewhere and out of somewhere, that represents a binary yes or no, or one or zero, or more realistically, electricity flowing or not flowing. Okay, so let's quickly go over a couple more logical gates. There are a lot of these and we can't get into all of them, but let's just go over the OR gate really quickly. First scenario, you're not a boy and you're not tall, so you're not either of these things. The answer is no. Second scenario, 
you're not a boy, but you're actually tall. But the answer is yes in this case, because remember, or. You're tall, you're not a boy, but the answer is still gonna be yes. Third scenario, you're a boy, but you're short. At least you're a boy, so yes or one. Final scenario is that you are a boy and you are tall. Obviously the answer is yes, in this case too, for or. So those were all four possible outcomes for the or logic in computers. Okay, so last piece of logic we're gonna check out is the exclusive or logic. And just check out this diagram and this picture real quick. This is exactly the same as the or logic, except for one case, when you're both a boy and you're tall. The case where you're a boy and you're tall, or if both inputs are true, the exclusive or logic actually returns false. All right, so this is when the word exclusive really comes into the play. You're either exclusively one thing or exclusively the other thing, not both at the same time. So if you're a boy and you're tall, this is actually gonna be false because you're not exclusively one or the other, all right? So this exclusive or is one of the most important logical ideas in all the computers and just look at it real quick and understand how this is different from the or logic. All right, exclusively or. Okay, so hopefully that sunk in a little bit and that was a quick introduction into basic logic. We went over and, or, and XOR. And there are many more and I encourage everyone to go online and read about other types of computer logic, but those three are gonna be the most important ones for this video. All right, part two of this video is that we're just gonna go over binary really, really quickly. And I don't have time to explain really how binary works, but all we have to do in this video in terms of binary is just count to three. All we have to do is count to three and it's kind of baby stuff. This is zero to three in binary. So just take a look over here, zero, one, two, three. Trust me, I'm not an expert at binary, but I can at least count to three, you know, that's like preschool level counting. So just trust me, this is how you count to three in binary. Okay, so yes, I assume you trust me. We can all count to three in binary. Let's just do some really, really quick additions in binary first. So we know how to add normal numbers. Let's just add binary numbers really quickly. It's exactly the same. Zero plus zero is zero. Easy, right? Zero plus one is one. 1 plus 0 is 1. And finally, 1 plus 1 is 2, right? Yeah, 1 plus 1 is 2. Pretty much what's happening here is you're just doing a carry. If you go back to your elementary school days and you did your addition on paper, remember when the digits are greater than 10, you carry over a 1 to the left. Well, this whole carry concept is exactly the same in binary. It's just that you can't count to 10. So 1 plus 1, we actually carry the 1 to the left, so it's two. So that's all it means. Five plus five is 10, right? And look how we carried that one over to the left. This is exactly the same as one plus one equals two. So it's just carrying digits over, all right? Binary, decimal, exactly the same, almost. Okay, so you remember these tables from before? We laid out the tables and the outcomes of and, or, etc., all that stuff. Well, we can make the same exact kind of table for adding something. So let's just pull up a table for this adding concept real quick, all right? So your two inputs are gonna be A and B, and we're gonna have two outputs now. So the C column is actually that carry column that we were just talking about in binary, and the S, we can call it the sum column. So remember our basic baby binary addition, let's just double check that this table for adding something makes sense in binary, all right? Zero plus zero equals zero, that's cool. One plus zero is one. Zero plus one is one. And one plus one is two. And that carry bit is sent over to the left. So just take another look at this table and let's just verify that that's exactly how you add two basic binary numbers. Remember, we're just adding zeros or ones, right? So the max we can get is two. There's only four possibilities. Do you notice anything similar with that C column, the carry column, and our AND, AND logic? Look at those two tables side by side real quick. You'll notice that they're exactly the same. 
Now look at the results for the S column and notice how these are exactly the same as our XOR or exclusive logic, right? Just do the table comparison real quick. I'll let you look at it, but you'll notice that they're exactly the same. So what does this all mean? And what are we trying to get at really? But if you look at those similarities, the carry bit when we add two binary numbers is actually equivalent to the AND of those two numbers. And remember the S column, we just compared it to the exclusive OR. The S output is exactly the same as the exclusive OR output. So let's just draw both of them up here. All right, we're gonna draw it right here. All right, so let's just take a look at this diagram over here. Look really closely at it. Remember, each gate is two inputs, one output. Two inputs, one output. When we consider this whole addition thing, our baby binary addition, remember, it's actually two inputs, two outputs, because we have to remember that carry output. Keep this picture up and just like try to let it all sink in and figure out what's happened, all right? We started with basic logical ideas boy and tall, boy or tall. We started with those basic logical concepts and we've already constructed it to do something useful or add two numbers. So we went from logic to math. That's crazy, right? Just random logic, boy and tall, to math, which is like super smart. The conclusion to all this, going from stupid logical gates to doing something smart like adding is how a computer is built. This is exactly how a computer is built. If you multiply these gates by 100, you have 100 or 1,000 of these small little gates, you could probably multiply or divide a numbers. Obviously, we took the most basic case of adding, but you know, add a couple more gates here, make it more complex, and you're gonna do more complex math. If you multiply these gates by 1 billion, 1 billion gates, that turns into your processor. See how that's crazy? So every single one of those logical gates that we just talked about is all it is, is just pieces of metal and electricity flowing through that metal. You take millions, billions of those gates, you put it together, you get hardware. You put hardware together, you get the computer that you're on right now watching this video. You go to your computer, you write software which controls the hardware and that software controls all those electricity flowing through those little logic gates. That's a little crazy, right? So just let that sink in. You're writing software and the current of electricity is changing, so. All right guys, that's the end of the video. We definitely covered a lot. Hopefully it told a pretty good story of how really, really complex things are just based on really basic ideas like boy and tall and it builds up everything. Please like the video if you liked it. If you have any questions, I know there's probably gonna be a lot of questions, just drop me an email or go below and drop a comment and I'll try to answer the question as best I can. As always, please do any additional research if any of this stuff didn't make sense and I'll see everyone next week. All right, take care.